and then mine should just auto host you, huh? Hey, hey Gundy, how you doing today, man? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this this is uh, something that that uh, Gunner and I are trying. We're doing D and D with D and G. I'm David. This is Gunner. Um, and yeah, what we'd like to do is just kind of sit down and, and chat about our favorite thing, D and D. It's definitely not weird for us. Um, people do this all the time, all over the world. They they hop on a, a video call, and for no other reason is it weird for us specifically. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could we could definitely get to, like a table set up. I think we just have to find a good spot. Yeah, and then just hook up both of our mics, but I just think it's so funny that you're literally like 30 feet in the other room. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing when we when we both are live and we're streaming, you know, it's just funny. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> or when I'm chatting in, in, in your stream or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so you and I actually, we met over a game in, of D&D. We did. All and, those, so many years ago now. Yeah, what was it like three and a half years ago, maybe? Which feels like ten and a half. Well, you know when the world now? ends, like <laughs> <laughs> you know that's that's what it is. But uh, no, I I was working with um, a good friend of yours, Niles, uh, mm -hmm. who you've known since you were itty bitty. Uh, yeah, we both were. What, what were? What, how old were you guys when you met? I so we moved from Florida back here to Tennessee where we are now and I'm when I like met him and actually started like talking to him and getting to know him I was probably God, I was like in fourth grade okay, so for yeah. for that it's probably like so eight sure nine that, like nine years yeah. old okay well I I worked with Niles and uh I would see him come in with like uh, uh he had this hoodie it was like crit happens, and I was like, "Oh, that's really cool. That must be a D and D thing." Um, and I would try to like talk to him about it, and I started I started going to this uh, this game store that was hosting games and just kind of mm. be thrown in, and that was my trial by fire. And eventually, he was like, "Hey, well, I'm about to start a campaign. Why don't you come hang out here?" I didn't know anybody else there except for him. Um, and wow, here we are three years later. <laughs> yeah, so that was our game that you came in and, and sat in on on day one. Yeah. We had just been playing um, another campaign that we decided to, we reached a narrative stop. And so Niles was talking about, you know, I have a I have another idea. It would basically give us a chance to build new characters. Um, and then I remember when he mentioned, hey, a buddy from work, because I didn't work uh, where we work now at the time. It was like a buddy of mine from work is super into D&D &D and he wants to come and check it out. So I was like, oh, cool. So it's not just me, Niles, and, uh, and Mickey, the, yeah. the, the, the three amigos. We have, a, we have a fourth coming in. And I think we added... Did we add uh, Big Dog? Did yeah, we Big add Cam Dog in was as there. Well? Whole, yeah, whole Big Dog. Yeah, from yeah, day he one. Was, he was there day one. So I got to meet you, Mickey, and Cam. Yeah. Like, right there. And like immediate was like okay, let's go play D and D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we hit the ground running. Yeah, we really did. Um, so I yeah it was it was essentially my first time actually sitting down at the table and like really playing. Um, and man, I came on strong. I was worried I came on a little too strong, honestly. I to me it came across as like this dude's been playing D and D. <laughs> for a lot longer than we have because you knew your character so well already and then i was like okay like he's been itching to to get this guy out <laughs> into the world and yeah. to share his voice that's true i i had i had that you know we've talked about this before where I'm like you got a guy in your head and you just need to get you need to get them out right yeah because you're just talking to yourself the whole time yeah. you need an outlet for for yeah. that character and that was that was my first character my first real character marxist uh for me um, do you have a do you have a character that was like that where it was like an idea in your head for so long that you just had to when when the opportunity arose you were like yes I gotta play this guy. I mean you know in that campaign which we refer to as the campaign of the chosen that was like our our team name our moniker in that world. Um, 
I started out with a rogue character, and then immediately, like in session one, I got like FOMO, or I was I was feeling like, okay, no, like I need to play something else. Like rogue is not it for me, and I I switched. <laughs> I talked to our 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 GM Niles, and I said, hey, I think I messed up. Like I don't think I want to play rogue. Um, and I switched to cleric, um, and we had like a kind of a cinematic moment at mm-hmm. the beginning of the second session, and kind of did like a, a bait and switch for me. Well, and of course, such a hard time as a rogue that first session, it, man. <laughs> I I wanted to be Vaxel Dan, like yeah. that. I would just come off of watching a ton of Critical Role, and I was like, I I want to be that rogue. But mm-hmm. we were at level one, so it didn't translate. The character that i i feel like i had in my head for a long time and i i wanted to play not necessarily a voice but um my monk in in your campaign ah, for yes. embers on the coast um i had this we you, we're good to swear on here right yeah of course yeah i had this like shit kicking monk in <laughs> in my head for so long and for and for the the purposes of playing a D game because the very first time I ever got brought into somebody else's campaign, I played a drunken monk. Mm. I played uh, uh, a drunken fist monk for one session, and I fell in love with it. And yeah. I, ever since then, I was like, okay, well, if I ever get a chance to play a monk again, I want to do it this way. Like, I want to I want to be sober, I want to be present, but, like, I had a very clear um, framework in my head and then had the chance to to open up and, and <laughs> perform oh, man. And for like, yours. You play him so well too. And yeah. I see now how, you know, cause I, when I stepped into the, into the DM seat, um, just seeing how difficult monks are to deal with. <laughs> yeah. And I think like, Oh, this, this trap will get them. Nope. Oh, this, Oh, you can half damage. Okay. never mind. Yeah. <laughs> between, you know, between could... like you and the bear totem barbarian, it's like, you know what? What are we, what are we doing here? Because <laughs> a lot of it, it, the nature of the game, it falls to the dice, mm-hmm. and sometimes you're hot. Like we have players who are usually hot, and they roll high on their on their hits and their saves, and we have characters who are not, and like they just historically have rolled like under five. Yeah. <laughs> for all those like major moments, but it's <sighs> funny when even and and we've also talked about this previously off the stream, but um. You know, a, a, a failure isn't always necessarily like an outright failure. And yeah. what I personally enjoy about the game is the moments where my monk fails or doesn't do the big badass, you know, coup de gras, uh-huh. uppercut, or something else happens, and you kind of have to. It's almost like, um, uh, what is it? Like tuck and roll. Like you kind of gotta go into it, like fall into it, and then find out, figure out how you're gonna get back on the horse, right? Yeah, absolutely, and you you do it so well too. Um, I try, I try. <laughs> because like, yeah, I've I've had players where they're like they fail, and it's like a oh man, well I really shouldn't have. And then like you mm-hmm. know you you have those moments, but like when Ao fell, okay, I, I think about the instance where um, he, by all accounts he should have made it past. It was it was like a storm, and you guys were on like a very small like rock way up to a mm-hmm. tower and like it was a deck save you should have made it you're a monk that's a it's a given that's my but my max stat he took a salt bath and guy you know he got <laughs> out and he said that was awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, was dude. Best, that was the best response to it <laughs> <laughs> like like fell down the side into the like the crashing wake of the ocean and just got like ragdolled for a second yeah you and then quite stuck to the side too. I was just like, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I, I yeah, I really appreciated that about him. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's definitely one that's been knocking around in my my noggin for uh, several years. The first time I played was in full sale when I we were down in Florida mm. all those years ago. Yeah. Um, and I got brought in for that kind of. It was a very like beer and pretzels. Yeah, and the the guy who ran it, he had like five kids on top of like his six guests that gotcha. he had in an in a, in a <laughs> apartment, and nothing against him. Um, you know, his kids had a great time, we had a great time, mm-hmm. um, but it's nothing like the group that we have now, where yeah. we're all kind of very like when we sit down and play, we're all engaged, we're focused, but like we still have a good time. We still yeah. cut up and oh, for sure. you know, yeah, we have tell a very jokes solid and stuff. Group at this point, um, mm-hmm. where we've played three campaigns four campaigns together now <laughs> a couple one shots yeah 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 it's uh it's been really fun 
Um, so your the very first character or your very first memorable character mm-hmm. was that um, was that the orc bar? Yes, <laughs> that that is my um, my infamous orc bard Borgu the impotent. <laughs> yes, impotent. that is the word impotent. Yes, <laughs> it was intentional because he was very impotent. <laughs> yeah, and it was very much like uh, you know we had a couple friends that talked about playing D anD D, wanted to play D anD D, and nobody wanted to run it. Mm-hmm. Niles and I both were kind of I mean we, at the time we were noobs, we were total yeah. greenhorns, hadn't really had a campaign under our belt and we had a bunch of friends who one person finally stepped up and was like i got an idea for a campaign yeah perfect and with this this was really like the critical role where we had like a dedicated like seven or eight people mm. that usually played week over week we had like our one night a week and then we had guest spots like yeah. we had we probably had 10 or 15 people rotate in and out and would come in and sit in for a session and just observe mm-hmm. or roll up a character for a one shot and so it was very much it was almost like saturday night live like it was just yeah. like you never know what's going to happen and my my orc bard um was one of two bards that we had in that group so the other one was a much uh m- much more refined and focused bard <laughs> Borgu was like jack of all trades. Mm-hmm. Like he could play five different instruments and none of them well. <laughs> but <laughs> like, you know, he tried and that's that's the main point, right? And bless him, he he did his best. <laughs> I think my my personal favorite memory and I won't I won't go on too long about it cuz I want to hear about yours. Oh, no um, um I you get as part of the background for the the character that I rolled, I I was I was permitted a letter from somebody. I, I remember specifically it was it said you are permitted like a letter that you have on your person. Um, you can refer to it for like your own like a memento or like maybe it's you know to get you in somewhere kind of like a letter of admission for like an academy or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but mine was a letter from Borgu's mom, <laughs> which very plainly and very simply read, Borgu or dear Borgu, you do you. Love mom. <laughs> That's perfect. And that was it. Yeah, that was just that was his pride's possession, and um, I love that character now, because it he, just was he an orc or was he a half orc? Half orc, okay. I will say. Um, and so, that was kind of like the mom's kicking me out of the house because like I make too much noise and I got too much energy. So she's yeah. like, "You just go off, go to the bard college. You do you. Like, leave me alone." <laughs> like, <laughs> so was, he was, was a lot. Mom, like a human or? or... Um, I think I played it as, as, as mom was the human, dad mm-hmm. was an orc, and then he was a half orc. Um, it was a half breed um, who just loved music and performance and singing songs. And <laughs> um, that campaign, funny enough, it ultimately, we ended up uh, labeling it as the, uh, the rock opera. Yes. <laughs> so we led into um, a battle of the bards, like mm-hmm. a battle of the band style, like. Yeah. Um, climactic event which also led into like you know your your atypical um you know save the world you know uh world eater boss and we got to stop him with the power of rock and roll like it it was just like (laughs) so so it was tenacious d you guys were tenacious d (laughs) We were tenacious D and D, yeah. Like we had, we actually got the um, the pick of destiny was one of our like legendary items in the game. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So that was uh, Borgu the impotent was my all time favorite first like sojourn and and (laughs) attempt at D and D. And we played for probably like a good eight or nine months consistently. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. um, For for my first character was very much like uh, a situation with Borgu, except for a lot less fun. Um, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because I I had started playing at a um, Magic the Gathering slash mini shop, right? Um, And it was fun, but it was very much like some people were there one week, some people weren't. The DM uh, was a um, 3.5 dm that had just switched to and that's a that's a very different kind of dnd so he was learning it along and it, it was it was actually really sweet because like he wanted his son to play so he would bring his son along and like it was mostly like a father-son thing but then like he had to teach me how to play <laughs> you know like you know and it was just we had a revolving cast as well but i played a uh, i played uh a half elf uh ranger yeah um 
and I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a sniper, and that's exactly what I did. Is I just sat in the back with a bow, um, and after a while, I realized how boring that was. <laughs> yeah. And we actually we got into a battle um, with a bunch of uh, where tigers, I think, um, and I was doing oh. half damage the whole time, and I was like, yeah, uh... this is this is not gonna work. <laughs> so. Um, Were you guys like? early like like the first five levels or? Yeah, i think i was like level six at that point yeah I think oh, okay we were like level six uh we were doing a module called the black road um where you essentially it was it was actually kind of cool you like your task with leading a caravan through the desert yeah and like sandstorms would whip up and all sorts of really cool stuff would happen um and uh but yeah, I, I would, I would like, <laughs> I would come back and I would talk to, to Niles about it at work. And I remember when I was first getting started at this game store, I would, uh, I like brought him just some scribblings on, uh, of like a character sheet that I made up. I remember. Yeah. yeah and he was just like, <laughs> I mean, you got the right idea, but do you want me to print you out an actual character sheet? I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, after we got to talking, I told him that, uh, how I had this idea um, for this for this Dragonborn Paladin, and like, oh man, I just really want to play this guy. And and then eventually he was like, well, you know what? I'm starting a campaign. Why don't you why don't you come on? And then two and a half years later, and 20 levels later, um, that was it. We we took that one from level two to level 20. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah, he started us at level two, and then played for the better part of two years yeah. almost yeah. um and then we were talking about you know once we got to a close Niles would take a break yeah um but i think you had already or yeah you had already started running yeah, your I own started, at that point yeah i started dming last year uh around this time i think it was may it yeah was like late april early may that I started yeah. because we had went into quarantine and I was bored <laughs> as we all were and I needed more D&D in my life and I was like well for some reason it's less intimate oh and you know what Roll20 had a uh, they were giving away some modules for free yeah so I just downloaded those and, and ran um, Lost Minds of Fandelver wow and then yeah now we're <laughs> uh into our, our second year of, of quarantine. Hopefully yeah. not for long. Yeah. Both of us, we got our, our first our first stabs. Yeah, this week. So that feels good. But, um, I mean, yeah, just like the, um, the, the idea that you have a group of six people mm -hmm. who uh, we also kind of had a, a, a rotating cast for a little bit. Yeah. Um, we locked in. We found our, our, our found sexy our six. six. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we, we got our, uh, our groove after mm -hmm. that and then um through the rest of of the chosen campaign i mean there was just like like you could have the worst week outside of playing the game like yeah. at work and you know something happens you you got an offender bender you know stubbed your toe uh the day before and uh everything else could just just be terrible um but nothing nothing got you fired up like that night we played D, &D mm -hmm. uh, and we all went over to uh the the niles's place had the basement oh, and dude, played so we had the cover on the on the pool table played in a basement <laughs> yeah it was like the pinnacle it was just like everything like it didn't matter what was going on that we do we play thursday or friday nights we would play we started sunday nights i think oh it was sunday yeah yeah we started so sunday yeah because i would, Capping off I your would week. go to work that morning at like 4 30 a.m because i was still working two jobs back then <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and uh, then uh, i mean yeah it just there was everything and that's i think you know why we we branched out and then now you have your own running campaign and then i too, am, yeah. am wrapping up the the part two of my campaign from yeah. years ago oh, um and how fun it has been <laughs> <laughs> but just yeah i mean the the idea that we've had this this core group of friends to get together and play this game and be silly but also like like i said like everybody takes it seriously when you know we kind of we hit those those story moments those yeah. story beats um we're all engaged we're present we're like keeping each other honest like you know making sure that we're doing all the right roles mm -hmm. and following the rules to a degree um 
and it just it there's nothing else like it i think if you play like a board game yeah like back in the, the mid to late 90s or even today or like you know play a game online with your buddies and play like overwatch or call of duty it just it doesn't hit that part of my brain that what do we call it the um, goopy goblin gamer yes, brain yes the goopy goblin gamer brain yeah you gotta hold my attention man yeah um, the, the clickety clack rocks i need yeah. uh, i need i need to play like well, it just it hits different with that campaign because we went we went three different locations and then online so four different yeah. locations we played that that game in because <laughs> we had to we had to flex at the start of uh, when coronavirus hit mm-hmm. and niles was like okay uh there's a website called real 20 um, I think I can get everything set up if we all make accounts and log in. Yeah. Um, we should be able to play again. And it was like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> like, yeah. Good enough. <laughs> yeah, we had to finish the story. We had to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I played a. I played the Dragonborn Paladin. Um, mm-hmm. You played the. Well, you played. <laughs> you played a Tabaxi Rogue. Uh, you played a uh, High Elven Cleric, and you played a Goliath Cleric. In that, yes. All in that same campaign. <laughs> you uh, you also switched to a warforged um, barbarian. Yes, I did. Barbarian, a storm, <laughs> a living storm oh. of a of a character. Yeah. Um. But I, I, I again, I played most of that campaign. So two and a half years, mm-hmm. most of it as a lawful good paladin, and like great starting point. I doubt I'll ever do it again. <laughs> You don't think you could do it? You can. You couldn't do the two two year marathon. Well, no, no, no. It's not the two year marathon. It's the lawful good for two and a half years. Right, and thus you went to the other end of the spectrum, and you played a, 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 a evil a alignment evil character in my campaign. campaign. Yeah, that, that was my, I... my next thing. Was like, okay, yeah, let's let's switch up, and we're doing lawful evil, and we're seeing how that plays out. Which I may I say, sir, <laughs> sir. <laughs> is delightful and such a refreshing uh tone for you know most of us we we play neutral to lawful good characters some chaotic yeah. most chaotic but in the in the range of good mm-hmm. it's really interesting to change that dynamic between players when someone maybe doesn't have everyone's best interest in mind yeah they're always looking out for numero uno and you play it so well and it makes again like that like I gotta see what Alabaster does next. <laughs> like, well, and I think, I think what really adds to that, and the reason we're able to pull it off now, is because we spent two and a half years um, building trust as players, and, yeah, and being those lawful good goody. Because everybody was basically like either lawful good or chaotic good, but we were all good characters doing good things. Um, and being for good know, people, very, yeah, very classic <laughs> saviors of the realm. You know, uh, we were Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah. Yeah. We were, we were purging, uh, <laughs> we were purging evil from the land right. and, so, um, yeah, it's hard to be mad at the guy that was like the big meat shield last time around when he just kind of wants to be a dick this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it, it, and I think it, to your point, the trust was was set up and established that foundation of like, okay, how how deep into this role, like, you know, like it's Gunner at the table, but at a certain point, like the character is just it's you. It's yeah. like you're in it, you're there, and yeah. um, we all I think learned very quickly is like, oh, we can get into it. Like we can really like hit those emotional spots and dig in and yeah. i i i'm a firm believer that part of this game is a very weird retroactive retroactive form of therapy yeah uh, sure. that un- unintentionally you can make a character that is ideally you want to play somebody that you're that's very different from you mm-hmm. and you want to be the hero or the villain or you know a larger than life character but you're put into scenarios and situations that would make you think differently yeah and then I, for me there's been a lot of personal closure in my life from imaginary D D games yeah. like <laughs> yeah <laughs> things that suddenly make sense when put through the lens of a dice game like who'd have thought right well yeah and i think i think it was you know cathartic to um be able to play like a lawful good to smite everything that I that is that is wrong with the world away because I can't do that in real life, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the next so the next character I rolled up was like, oh, I want to be super rich because I'm obviously not. <laughs> yeah, right. 
And that was, you know, like for um, my, so I played, I started as a rogue, mm -hmm. changed my mind on the first session, and then talked to Niles and was like, hey, I kind of want to go a different route with this. Yeah. I think we could use a healer um, because I took so much damage <laughs> in the first one. There's only so much a level two paladin can do in, yeah. in terms of healing. Yeah. I thought of it mechanically as like, maybe I should just call it here mm -hmm. and switch to cleric mm -hmm. uh life cleric specifically so all heals maximum heals yeah like. dude he was the best at healing um yeah. but uh, these D, D campaigns that we've been doing are very much like comic books in that nobody that's dead is really dead so you you know the character died off screen and he came back and you got to play him still yeah oh man how heartbreaking that was to like you'd be stuck on a week of wondering like oh my god like david's character died like what is he gonna do like is he gonna play someone else are we gonna bring him back like like i just turmoil like inner like frustration well, yeah, again we for had this been game for like a year and a half at that point and was like ramping up to the big finale and then the tank died um which was just like deep. that and it was one of the it was a death that it was a cursed death so he couldn't couldn't be brought back that, and that was it too that you you literally got turned to dust yeah and for a life cleric like all i needed was a body if i could get your body i could bring you back i would do anything to bring you back any of us would but because you got disintegrated you were i like, mean and for real though it, it hit me um to know how much you got to like watch you guys straight up grieve for something that i made and something that i spoke through for a year and a half like it was it was really something i was like wow hey i, I did a good job <laughs> <laughs> why is everybody crying yeah i know right uh it's wrong. It was for that week and a half or however long it took for me to to come back as as sunny um oh i was just eating it up i was absolutely just eating up the <laughs> Um, but you know as good of a character as sunny was yeah. irreplace irreplaceable when it mm -hmm. came to marxist yeah. and like you said came back like finished the campaign strong yeah became a king of his own land like. and like i want to be clear i did not plan that that yeah. was dropped on me uh niles john snowed me and i was just like oh all right <laughs> <I> <laughs> so you know i did what any rational person would do and take the throne <laughs> glorious um, yeah but sunny was actually very uh cathartic cathartic for me too um mm -hmm. because i went from i went from like the paladin who was the face of the party and always like talking and honestly like making most major decisions and everybody looked to me to like born uh, like born yesterday robot mm -hmm. and that was great. mute born yesterday robot <laughs> and i just uh yeah i just let you guys lead um, yeah, which was really it, that was really fun. So I'll I'll jump ahead a little bit yeah, because it's please. kind of on the on the same wavelength of what we're talking about. So uh, you know, we're talking about what it was like to play a campaign for two plus years mm -hmm. and get to know each other and ultimately end up moving in together yeah. and um, finding out we had a lot of other interests, similar interests, and things in common. Um, uh, you know the the transition that we all had to make mm -hmm. when it came to our extracurricular activities um when covid hit and we all got sent into lockdown and it was suddenly like it, of all the things that change in your life one of the thoughts that i had was oh god are we going to ever get to play D, D again yeah and then we switched to a digital medium mm -hmm. and so like for uh, you know now it's it's what we know it's our bread and butter we we live and breathe in it outside of our work and jobs and social lives you niles and i all yeah. three of us um you know what that's like to go from you know in-person sessions to you know hopping on a, a discord call much like this uh, getting all everybody logged in and online and then you know just everybody hanging out at home together for three to four hours or seven to eight hours a week yeah um it has its pluses and its minuses, right? Yeah. Where we can we can have all sorts of crazy maps. We can you know do crazy character tokens and stuff like that. Um, but we can't see each other, and we yeah. can't like you can't see my mannerisms when I'm playing. You can't see you know how I'm playing a character. Um, 
And then there's also, there was something we had to get over as well is like, you'll talk over each other a lot more uh, over Discord instead of uh, at the table. Because you could like see when somebody was about to open their mouth to say something. Or like physically, they'll get anxious and be like, I got a thing. I, yeah. I, and, and like, they'll start flipping through their, their, their journal and their character sheet. Like, I know I have something for this. And mm. you're, you're kind of like, okay, I'm going to let them do their thing first. Yeah. That being said, I don't know if I would have ever jumped into into the chair had we not moved to roll 20 because really it, well yeah because it took it took this huge thing of like okay i'm gonna need maps i'm gonna i'm gonna need you know tokens i'm gonna need a space to do it and host it and you know i need a table and i need chairs and snacks and uh to where it was just like hey i downloaded this i just need everybody to make an oh you already have an account okay make a character and yeah from there it was okay that's a, yeah, that, that's a good point. Because <laughs> I do feel like there's, you can bare bones it to a point, mm -hmm. but like we were already kind of spoiled with Niles' setup and the Collection minis. minis and, sometimes and you bring the TV out. Yeah, and the maps, like he would do hand drawn maps, but then would, you know, like basically display it flat on the TV, and then we put our minis on top. And like to me, an in person game with. Uh, identical miniatures to the characters that we're playing yes. on a, a freaking moving battle map on a TV yeah. in a basement, you know, with all of us together eating snacks and drinks Black and stuff. Black robes, like, candlelight, you know. Yeah, uh, the the, the spiral dagger, <laughs> yes. you know. Uh, yeah, no, that that to me minus the culty part. Yeah, uh, Christian mom's watching the show. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, is always like the pinnacle. Yeah, it, it, you, it's irreplaceable. Like you will, I, if I if I could ever get to back to that point, I would push for it, and I would love to host another in person session, like yeah. for Romance Dawn for my game. Or, um, but that's a good point that it kind of takes a lot of that legwork out, and it's much easier to push it all into a digital format, mm -hmm. and then like you said, just have people log in, sign in, just present your character. Even us, like, we'll just take that character sheet and translate it into the game and do all the, you know, pluses and minuses for yeah. you. And then, boom, like, you're ready to go. It was much easier. And I think, personally, I think the production value went up oh, yeah. because you took out a lot of the constraints of having to have all of this physical, tactile, mm -hmm. you know, material out of it. You just, all you have is an account and your time. Yeah. And you just, you just pour through Pinterest well, and like, find all your reference images. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to like create a special token for zombie wolf instead of throwing, you know, a, a troll down and being like, now pretend that's a zombie wolf. Right. Uh, yeah. you know, because you don't have a zombie wolf mini, but you really want to run one. Um, mm -hmm. I think also stepping into the DM chair, it was really, um, it was less intimidating because I wasn't in front of anybody. So I could do like all the weird character voices. Like for instance, um, the blacksmith Paul, the um the the god the, no, he's not a goblin the um the gnome um yeah. and to get that ridiculous voice i had to like screw up my face like complete and i could i don't think i could have done that in front of you guys like yeah. session two <laughs> even as as comfortable as we were yeah. at the time of starting it it's still this kind of like inherent just kind of not not shame but like fear of like oh this is going to be really dumb or it's, goofy it's, or it's vulnerable it's a vulnerable thing to play yeah. and it's very vulnerable to dm because i have to play all these people and you might make mistakes and you know you guys are are thankfully again very um you guys were very easy on me <laughs> yeah even if i wasn't but, easy on you the first few few rounds but you know i mean this is there's so much to keep track of i would say like you know 70% of the game is of the DM talking, describing, setting yeah. up encounters, scenarios, backlogging, you know, lore and mm -hmm. other characters' backstory, having to weave them all in together in this dynamic world. And the other 30% is the other characters like, okay, so I have a bonus to my strength, mm -hmm. but when I roll... For an a ranged attack, I don't. Add, I use my. Oh, I use my dexterity. Okay, where's my dexterity? Yep. And you kind of have to remind and guide, <clears throat> guide and reference the rule book, mm -hmm. and it's a lot. It's a lot to do. But I think through a digital format like this, it takes away a lot of the legwork to set up the game, and also that that vulnerability. Kind of, 
you have wiggle room. There's yeah. a bit more of like, okay, I can push this voice or, you know, yeah. uh, hit that hit that high note and then Discord will just cut out your volume and it's just <laughs> it's just a solid like a deep machine. <laughs> deep steps. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, so uh, harking back to I know I alluded to it earlier, but you know, the the cloaks and the daggers and the in basic candle in environments, um, the game has come a long way from the satanic panic of the 70s. When uh, Gygax and his buddies were first introducing it to the world, to yeah. all of the influence and influencers and uh, channels and, and merchandise. And just nerds that would just get their asses kicked that, you know, <sighs> you just wanted to play a, a game of D&D. <laughs> you just want to reach, reach back to the 70s and 80s and, like, stick around. Yeah. It's going to get it'll, it'll so be much okay, better. I promise. And now you we can... will be gods of our time. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's you can be anything and still be a player you know you yeah. don't have to be like a hardcore nerd or like you know for instance we have a player who's like for all intents and purposes like the high school jock and he's a country singer and he is you know one of the funniest players we have <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't upon first glance typecast this guy as a big D D nerd who plays yeah. twice a week like yeah. But it's it, it's true. His nature and this his his charisma just pours into the game and makes it one of the most enjoyable parts. Is you know what is Cam gonna say? Well, <laughs> what, yeah, and, and, what kind of character is he gonna play? He's even you know sought out an acting career here recently and, and has cited you know years of sitting around the table and being somebody else as as help for that. So you know if yeah. he has, if, you know when he's a big movie star, he really has us to thank for it, right? Exactly. <laughs> we can we can come back and show him this video and be like, look, man, we were we were singing your praises. <laughs> back before you know we we knew it we knew yeah. it no i'm just kidding he's yeah, just, just buy us a dungeon that's all we want it's just a dungeon yeah. to play in twice just a, a, a dedicated replica <laughs> of the first chosen dungeon yeah yeah um god just how much yeah the 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 world of DD, the influence that it has now the sort of stigma that used to be kind of i mean now I can hardly find anybody anywhere that doesn't have a nice thing to say about Dungeons and Dragons yeah. or they've tried it with some friends and they, or they want to try it and they want to get back into it or they don't know where to start. I did an interview uh, last year with somebody who was very much that. It's like I, I've heard all these different things about it. They're all pretty much positive experiences, um, but I just don't know where to start. And I think it's incredible how now in the digital age, uh, we're also connected um, that we can now share all of our notes, all of our resources, all of the custom games have yeah. been adapted into real licensed copyrighted like modules to play for other people just to again, like you don't know how to play. I'll send you a link to yeah. 50 one shot modules that are, <laughs> yeah. you know, for characters level one through 10. P take your pick, well, you know, I, or I, like I got to admit, I didn't spend I didn't spend a dollar on D and D that I didn't want to spend, you know, like Niles legitimately, he printed me out a, uh, a character sheet and he sent me a PDF of the player's handbook. Yep. You know, I, I mean, it's that, and then, you know, of course with things like D and D beyond roll 20, it, it really takes the guesswork out of it. Yeah. And it does all the math for you. It, it just auto calculates you. your roles. And that's a one, like kind of a con for, digital because i need that click clack i need that goopy goblin yeah. sensation of, of rolling dice in a tray and then sitting there with steam coming out of my head trying to add two <laughs> plus five plus six plus nine plus <laughs> eleven plus twelve yeah yeah i miss it as frustrating as it can be um but it is it's Agreed. it's so much more accessible it's mm. more versatile than it's ever been it it's i think like I, I would say it's the best medium for someone who has no experience um, and wants to try and get into it. Yeah. It's right there at your fingertips. Yeah. It's the easiest way to get started. Is doing it, doing it online. Um, yeah. I mean, and, and especially because like you can you can play with your friend across the world if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that we also owe a lot of uh, you know because at, at a certain point, like fantasy started to become cool. Yeah, you know, and the scale started to tip with with Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings series, right? But then, mm -hmm. like, Game of Thrones came out, 
and Game of Thrones, I, I've heard it be ex, ex, explained as like fantasy for people that don't like fantasy. You know, yeah. there, there wasn't a lot of like magic and like there was dragons, but that was like later on um, where it's like everybody watched Game of Thrones. Everybody thought it was cool. Uh, even if you didn't, you were you, you knew about it. Yeah, everybody was talking about it. You mm -hmm. could pick up, you know, surface chatter about it. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, it, it then became like another long running series that people can go back to and get that, that, um, that fantasy fix from, yeah. you know, the, the larger than life story, the kings and queens and lords and ladies. Like, and I feel like too, we've, we've, we've talked about maybe changing our, um, our genre a bit because that's very much been the sort of, high fantasy you know swords and magic yeah. like that kind of medieval era of of what our stories are set in the kind of time frame mm -hmm. um maybe you i mean you can you can push it three thousand years into the future and do yeah. a full uh you know firefly themed campaign or fallout themed yeah. or you know deep space nine like, like, um, a, like a like a steampunk type you know that that could fit it just like you know basically push your fantasy world like you said four to five hundred years in the future and there it is the industrial revolution but with like tieflings running around you've got like guns and trains and yeah. automobiles and then you can do like a oh man that'd be such a good one to do for like a like a late like 30s or 20s or 30s like mafioso type like a uh, film noir type yeah, yeah film noir mafia style with all the like crazy clockwork gears and yeah. masks and uh, dibs steam. on the gruff half orc detective type yeah <laughs> yeah oh i want to be awesome. like the you seen you've watched the boys right yes basically frenchy but like the crazy like tinker yeah. uh, level of like he can make anything if he can get his hands on the right parts and just has that like that x factor he just kind of got a twitch to him a little crazy yeah a little crazy a little, little i could i could i could make it for you yeah hey, give me a few days a little little victor thrown in there from <laughs> learn from girl. my mistake. Yeah. Uh, uh, um but yeah uh, honestly like having somebody hand me the the paper and like here this is a character sheet fill it out and bring it back to me that did not help or it, mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't enough and i'm lazy so i didn't want to read the player's handbook so you know going back to the idea of like um different resources available D, &D beyond and i had started watching critical role at that time so like they right. kept talking about it and kept talking about it so i gave it a try and it just it made it that much easy it, it made it really easy because it, it made it like a questionnaire of like yeah. okay hey what do you want to be good at what do you want to be bad at what you know what, what what's your background what you know what race do you want to play um and then every time you leveled up it just kind of gave you another one of those hey do you want why don't you pick a spell <laughs> yeah, it, it it grows like mm -hmm. exponentially as you play because it's not just the character that you start with right much like our real lives mm -hmm. it's the person that you become it's through all of the missions and quests and encounters and dungeons and uh boss battles that like your character comes to life yeah. and there's a lot of moments in between that kind of shape your your you know what you become and yeah. like what our characters became in the chosen arc were miles apart from the the little you know out uh <laughs> podunksville city folk you know all just kind of bumping into each other yeah have no clue what's going on on the the macro level well i, uh, I set out with my character being like i said i wanted him to be a mixture of like judge dread and don mm -hmm. quixote <laughs> and like that was you know kind of like he thinks he's this big huge like you know, he, he wants to believe in, like, fantasy and, and, and giants and dragons and stuff. Um, and he wants to be a, a knight. Um, but also, he he feels like the world is black and white. And a sense of right and wrong are solid. Um, and I think that was, like, that was kind of a character growth for him. Was that, like, you know, maybe the world's not black. And I know that's that's pretty atypical. But, um, you know, where, where he ended up versus where he started was really... Really yeah interesting and for Emerel, my my um half elf cleric then <laughs> turned into a goliath mm -hmm. uh cleric through some kind of uh christian rebirth strange christian rebirth <laughs> um 
mechanically, initially, I just thought of that a cleric would be beneficial to the party. Yeah. What he ended up becoming was... Very a, beneficial a, to the party. <laughs> very, extremely beneficial <laughs> to the party. Uh, as a maxed out life cleric, I didn't multi-class or anything, but uh, personally became an outlet that, like I, like I kind of said before, it's this kind of sort of therapy where like, I'm very much somebody who likes to make other people happy and yeah. and and make them laugh and do uh, acts of service and spend time with people. Um, so it brings me joy. Very much the same for that character. Um, but his story, he was kind of the the, the messiah of uh, of his of his kind of his people. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> what the the faith that he followed allowed him to kind of tap into this power that literally changed the tides of wars from ages ago mm -hmm. um he linked with a, a basically a spiritual predecessor that now we see in our our <laughs> our third campaign fourth yeah. campaign um that the influence is there and like you said um, a character may die or you know may may a story may end but the way that we've kind of set it up it's like you kind of go into the the D, &D hall of fame mm -hmm. and um are sort of like immortal <clears throat> immortalized in a way that that character could come back. Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was that was one of the coolest things about uh, about the first campaign that we played together. Um, we'll call it we called it Adventure Quest. So we're gonna, you know. Yes. Uh, so that was the coolest thing about Adventure Quest was like there was a time where all of the characters that you guys played in the past um, came to help us. Yeah. And it was Between... really cool to watch you guys all be yeah. like. Oh, that's my guy. Um, and so no, like the Avengers, that, like yeah. just like coming back when you need them most. Yeah. Like it was just like, oh. And and me and me and another player, Paulo. Like we, this is our first. This was our first campaign with you guys. So it was like we didn't have any players to draw from, or characters to draw from yet. But we were looking at each other like, yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be up there someday. <laughs> You are, yeah. yeah. You're you you put yourself in that like cryo tube mm -hmm. and like lock yourself away. It's like, all right, we're just gonna hang on to that for a rainy day. Yeah. <laughs> wait, you just you wait. And sure enough, oh man, if we ever do like some sort of battle royale or just like straight dungeon crawl, like, oh, just give me yeah. Sunny and let me let me go to town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so uh, we. Uh, We've got the the fun thing at the end. Do you want to get into that now, or yeah, do you want to? Absolutely. Okay. Did you, did you run a one run till seven or seven thirty? I, I mean, we can go till seven or after. Just if, if we're really getting into this, yeah. Let's, <laughs> what we're gonna do? Let's, so let's wait. roll it up. So you want me to do a fresh one? Uh, you can do a fresh one, or you can do the one that you showed me. All right, I'll do a new one. Can I share my screen? And will that will that translate? Yeah, you should be able to. Okay. So if I do this one. There we and go. then you Perfect. should be able to see it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me move my Discord. Okay, so we I rolled this one before we got started just to kind of test it out. But you can actually go to D and D Beyond if you have um, to make a profile. There we go. You, I think you get base three character slots. Mm -hmm. Like you can make three characters, three or six on the fly. Yeah, these are all my. Six. Yeah. Oh, Israel, Ogden. <laughs> yeah, Israel, my dudes. Um, but let's go ahead. We're gonna, we we talked about this. We're, let's make a let's make a random character, um, just to kind of show you one, just to goof off and and keep talking about D and D, but to also demonstrate how easy it is. You don't even have to think about making a character anymore. You can just go sign into D and D Beyond, go to make a character, and randomize it. What do you think? Level. That's, that's what we're gonna do right now. Yeah, let's get a level. Let's get a level seven. Person. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can do random race, uh, multi-class. Just random yes. everything. All right, <laughs> feats, and uh, we'll leave the character name blank to see what it comes up with. Yeah. So this, all of the, I think, arguably the hardest part of D&D, more so than actually running a game and getting a game set up, is making a character from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how many hours I've poured into stats and backstory details and what my character will look like and what kind of <laughs> items he's going to have and his skills and this just does it all for you so let's just roll the dice let's just see what we get I'm excited okay all right so it's done so let's view character sheet okay looks like Val we got a 
Goliath <laughs> Paladin. All right. Uh, a Paladin Druid Wizard <laughs> wow, named okay. Valstina. Okay, Valstina. I like so it. I'm guessing a I'm guessing a female Goliath. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, it looks good. I see it on the uh, on the. Okay, I've got the stream pulled up. Yeah. So um, Valstina, pretty good stats all all around. I'd say. Yeah, I mean she needs some work on her strength, but. <laughs> yeah, if you're uh, if, if your old well, paladin. paladin is charisma caster, but yeah, I mean yeah, to kind of wield heavy armor and stuff. Let's yeah. see. So we've got uh, wisdom and charisma. Our saving throws. So, okay, right off the bat, a paladin, a druid, and a wizard all yeah. walk into a bar and they say, <laughs> hey, why don't we just combine all of our efforts, <laughs> do like a Dragon Ball Z fusion ha, just and, be the same person <laughs> and become Valstina, right? Or like, what is, how do you get, how do you like start at paladin, take a, take a step into druid and be like, this is good, but you know what I need? countless more hours of reading spells and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> memorizing I mean, components may, maybe it's maybe it's a goliath paladin who worships a god or goddess but it's a very nature-based goddess so he takes a point into druid um and then finds a grimoire and starts starts reading that yeah um, so as like a supplementary deal to their nature magic you also have like a bank of spells that you just you learn and you learn about and add to a spell book Interesting. so yeah this could be like a tanky caster i guess sure yeah you've got the i mean at level seven you're sitting at almost what 60 hit points i feel yeah. like that's pretty good um channel you've divinity. got channel divinity <laughs> uh marine layer oh wait a second so this is uh um, oh, this is the the sea one isn't it yeah wait 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 so paladin features divine sense lay on hands divine smite sacred oath oath of the open sea yeah, yeah. this is the critical role one okay yeah so this is uh matthew mercer's uh interesting custom paladin subclass so uh you've got your divine sense your lay on hands your staples yeah uh for a paladin uh blind fighting Ooh. okay so not necessarily needing uh eyesight to fight almost has that like nature like sixth sense that would work when they're fighting the, don't they have the uh the like mist that they can cover things in yeah i was gonna say that's one of the um or was it part of like your oath spells right I think so it's either a spell or it's a channel divinity uh, okay uh, misty step you got misty expeditious retreat <laughs> yeah so, that's a lot so of mobility way I see this character working is like somebody that just kind of like stands in the back and throws spells, but then if somebody gets in too close, then then they've got the misty coverage. step, yeah. or yeah, like like that double dash in uh, this, to help them out. This a battle mage. Yeah, like a heavy battle mage. I yeah. can see them as a Goliath too. You know, yeah. like uh, sort of yeah, like you said, like keeping a perimeter. You know, doing support spells and uh, like range damage, and then just go 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 like full speed charge it in. There we go. Yeah, so with with maybe, and I, I don't want to lean too far on Sailor, but maybe she was a Sailor uh, that yeah. worshipped some sort of sea god. Um, like the, a, the um... wizard throws me off. So what I what I would do is I would take the point of wizard and put it in druid. So you had like yeah. a pal so you had like a paladin druid. Um, oh, that's that's good too. So you've got the uh, stones endurance, mm -hmm. the natural athlete, and the mountain born. So you resist the cold. So you could theme that with like the spells that you choose, and then Ooh, you're only level one druid, so you don't actually have a um, a circle yet, like a dedication. Yeah. But I would say druid of like the sea would yeah. also like just tie it in with the marine or the um, oath of the sea as well. She so could, kind of like a like, like a, a Glaucus paladin almost with the, with the, with the high um, with with the cold resistance i would say what if she's like an arctic fisherman or something Ooh, yeah, like yeah like a like a north or south pole like mm -hmm. alaskan fisherman yeah. like crab fisherman <laughs> yeah. yeah okay <laughs> valstina's coming together yeah. hang on let's see if we can get a good image for it okay so all right so yeah are. paladin okay. based in some sort of sea god you yeah. have well we can combine wizard yeah, and druid I, I to level two, two druid in, in druid and oh, so, there she is. Yeah, that's her, that, Faustina. That's a good. That's a good one. <laughs> and then, yeah, like, uh, what's what would be her weapon? Like, what would be her weapon of choice? 
I'd like to see her. What if she uses like a big hook like Maui? Oh yeah, <laughs> you know? like a, like almost like um like a broken anchor. Like yes. like one end of it is like busted, but the other end is like all rusted and gnarled and stuff. Oh, like it's man. like a heavy yeah. anchor. Anybody watching, and then... you can have this character when we're done if you want to play her. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll we can send it out to you if you're interested. <laughs> um, and then oh yeah, the skills right? So athletics, insight, and religion. Mm -hmm. I feel like that tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Insight, religion. Yeah, so, like, I, I like the idea of somebody that, like, you know, maybe she, she went to sea as a fisherman, fisherwoman, um, mm -hmm. however you want to say that, and then ended up, uh, you know, she, she ended up worshipping some sort of sea god, and that's how that happened. <laughs> yeah, so she's, like, on her way, like, what would be Valstina's, like, endgame, like, to prove her devotion or like is it a, a protector role like something someone's like melting the ice caps in their world and she's got to uh, stop like stop them from like wrecking the natural uh natural climate and like the you know where the <laughs> the ice caps are it's like a, a protector or something that's a good question i was i was gonna go down the um she's like living in exile route right Ooh, you know yeah right? maybe, she, maybe she took a job like way up north uh you know as as to get away from from whatever she was facing before it's um, like a it's a it's a job mm -hmm. but like it's a, it's like get out like do this job or like we're just gonna kick you out of town right because like, that's one of those jobs that like you're not coming back for like several months and especially if yeah is, if, we're, if they're still on like sailboats and stuff like <laughs> oh what if it's like um it's like a planet hulk like it's um it's like under the guise that she's going to do this like um this sort of watch post but like the ship that she goes in on gets compromised and like there's <laughs> nobody else like she's stranded out in the arctic wasteland yeah okay. so she's like she's like using her faith to uh as a paladin to like sort of survive the harsh climate as a goliath you kind of have the bonus but then yeah. like her time in the wilderness and the, and the icy wastes like she taps into another power and Almost it's like, like you uh, all your spells i'm thinking, are, uh, I'm thinking like uh, liam neeson in the gray yeah, you know, he's just out there like fist fighting wolves. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. I love this character. Oh my yeah. gosh. Let's work her into a campaign. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. In 5 minutes you could have a whole character. We just got to go in here, write some notes, yeah. and then uh boom, there it is. That's there true. you have it. That's Dungeons and Dragons condensed. Yeah. It was it was that easy, folks. It was that yeah. easy. <laughs> I I like that a lot. If we keep doing this, I, I would like to keep doing this. Yeah, no, first I, of all. I, I love um, that idea. That was great. Yeah, just like roll, just roll up a random character and give it, give it a backstory on the fly. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Well, yeah. Um, is there anything else uh, unchecked, un or missed? Anything else you want to? No, I think I think for our first, I think for our first show, that was that was good stuff. Um, and... Thanks, thanks everybody for tuning in, tuning in. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, I know we didn't, we weren't engaging with the community uh, that much this time around, but this was more of a like, you know, uh, Gundy and I sitting down and chatting. So, um, it's Ma. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Cookie Crunch Cookie! And, and everybody else that that showed up, uh, just you know, watching us, watching us talk D and D, and hopefully you got inspired to make your own character and and give it a try sometime. It'll it'll yeah. really surprise you. It's super easy now. <laughs> it's uh, it's right there at your fingertips, and it's, of it's course, true. hey, if you guys have questions, I'm always uh, uh, happy to talk D and D with yeah. some friends. Absolutely. Um, reach out, let us know. We'd love to help anybody else. I mean, I'll speak for myself. I'd love to help anybody else get started in playing this game and make your own little little adventure quest crew like we did. I, I, I floated around the idea of like doing an on stream one as well but i'd like i'd mm. also like to get embers chapter three up and running um yeah. so it was one of those things where it's like bro you don't have time for that you don't have to stop it <laughs> yeah stop stop <laughs> no <laughs> focus yeah yeah you know I, that would be a lot of of extra man man hours to mm -hmm. just even do like a mock session yeah um but hey maybe that could be another another one of these episodes you and i just do like a like a one-on-one -on -one and we just kind of fumble through uh, a game 
Okay. Or just like an encounter, like just like one encounter. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Yeah, we could we could certainly see about at, at the very least showing you guys, um, you know, roll twenty and how we do it. Yeah. Um, that might that might be fun. Cool. Um, well, but I think awesome, that's man. top of the hour, so we're gonna go ahead and sign off. But uh, again, thanks everybody for showing up and for chatting with us. Thank you so much. Hey, till next time. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.